What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about gradients in Swift UI. So we're going to take a look at putting together the gradient you see here. We're going to talk about how you can change the direction the colors are going, use multiple colors, custom colors. And I think arguably most importantly, we're going to be talking about how to put content on top of this. Now, of course, uh, the gradient looks really nice in light mode. It also looks pretty cool in dark mode here. So uh, that all said, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer. And now there's also gonna be a cool little tip at the end of the video about bringing in custom colors to your project without having to specify the value. So definitely stick around till the end of the video to find out how we do that. So that all said, let's dig straight into it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the iOS tab here and go ahead and select the app template. And let's go ahead and call this Swift UI Gradients. Make sure your interface as well as your lifecycle are both set to Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. We'll save this to our desktop. And as soon as Xcode decides to stop being slow, we're gonna go ahead and expand our window here. I'm also gonna hit this resume button to start loading up our preview on the canvas. Now this guy takes a little bit to load sometimes. Looks like that time it was super fast, but if it's slow for you, just be patient with it. It will definitely load after a little bit of time. And uh, that said, let's uh, bump up the font size and get straight into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a gradient. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on linear gradients. So go ahead and create a linear gradient, open up the initializer, and you'll see that this takes in three parameters. The first one is the gradient itself, then it's the start point and the end point. So let's do the start point and end point first. We're gonna do top leading for the star and for the end point, we're gonna do bottom trailing. And this basically describes what your uh, gradient should look like in terms of positioning. So top leading is the top left here and uh, bottom trailing is the bottom right here. So looks like it put in a uh, default gradient, but we're gonna go ahead and create our own here. So we're gonna create a gradient and we're gonna pick the one that takes in colors. So this takes in an array of colors and we can notice if we don't put anything in here, obviously it's gonna be clear, but let's go ahead and start putting in some colors in here. So the first one we're gonna do is going to be color.blue, then we're gonna do color.purple. And as you can start seeing already in our preview here is we're uh, seeing our gradient. Now let's pick some colors that are a little more uh, polar opposites so we can see them a little more brightly like that. Okay, awesome. So we can see that they're uh, definitely showing up now. Now what's super cool is you can actually put in multiple colors in here. So let's say we want it to go from blue to green then to yellow. Let's say we wanted to go even fancier and say we wanted another one and we wanted to go to let's say red. Uh, this array has no limit on it and uh, you can create really cool looking gradients really simply. Um, I don't know why every time I see a gradient now in an app it reminds me of Instagram maybe because they use gradients all over the place but Gradients definitely make your app come to life. Now let's talk about some more things. So we can see that the gradient here is respecting the safe area, but what if we want our entire background to be the gradient? Cause this doesn't look very nice in my opinion. So what we can do to actually go ahead and fix that is use a modifier. So I believe it's called uh, ignoring safe area. And then we pass in all and all. Let's see, what is this one? Let's try that one more time. We're going to pass in all and the edges in this case, we're going to pass in all as well. Yep. Go ahead and that should hopefully be compiling. It looks like it's not because I've got an extra dot here. So go ahead and uh, fix up your syntax and you'll see now your gradient takes up the entire screen and it's very simple to create this. Now, what if we wanted to put content on top of it? So we're going to leverage a Z stack, which is super, super common when you do anything with uh, background colors or uh, you know gradients or things like that. And what I'm gonna put on here is uh, a V stack on top of it, which is a vertical stack. And here we're gonna have an image and I'm gonna grab a SF symbol uh, in just a moment. We're just gonna keep that empty for now. And right below it, we're gonna have a uh, text label. It's gonna say sunny. 
I'm gonna bump up its font size just so it looks a little nicer. We're gonna stick with a size of, we want the one that has a system size, weight, and design. We're gonna stick with 24. And here we'll go with semi bold. And here we're gonna go with defaults. And uh, let's uh, open up SF symbols. And SF symbols, uh, if you're not familiar, is Apple's uh, symbol kit that you can use. And we're gonna go here into multicolor. We're gonna hit this. And we're gonna try to find a cool looking multicolor uh, image. I'm gonna filter this down to sun. And we can find this cool sun here. So Command Shift C to copy the name of that symbol. Paste that guy right into there. And you should see your image pop up. Now, A, it's kind of small, and B, it's not the colored version. So what gives? So what we want to do here is add a modifier for rendering mode, make this original. And we're also going to bump up the font size on this guy. So I'm going to give it a frame. And let's say a 220 by 220 centered. And let's add padding. All right, so now it's nice and large, but our gradient doesn't really show it because it merges into uh, the colors. So let's go ahead and uh, clean up our gradient here. So here we're gonna make a color with a uh, UI color inside here. So I'm gonna stick with a system pink. That's gonna be the first color. And uh, looks like is our, so this is definitely showing up the sun, but it's still actually small. The reason actually it's doing that is because we need to set up a resizable on here as a modifier to get it to be larger. But let's go ahead and go back to our gradient. And here, now we're gonna add up a system blue, just like that. Let's see that change. All right, looking much, much better. Let me throw a spacer down here so it pushes everything to the top. And uh, let's actually make this look a little nicer. I think we could do a better job than that. I'm also gonna go ahead and uh, give this a foreground color of white, just for the sake of looking a little nicer. And uh, let's, let's take a look at how we can change up this start point and end point. So we saw here, uh, I put in top leading and bottom trailing, but if you just hit dot to get all the cases for the enum, you'll see that there are quite a few options. So let's say you just want the top and bottom, which will be uh, you know a vertical gradient right here. You can do that, super simple. Um, this super reminds me of Instagram. I think they actually use these colors, but uh, that's how you can create a gradient super simply in your project. Now, one last thing I'll show, which is a bit of a pro tip. Now, if you wanted to create your own color with RGB values, let's say you want to pass in uh, red, green, blue, and alpha, you can create it like this. Let's say we pass in one, one, and one, and you can create your uh, color in UI color inside of the color. This is white to pink. But sometimes figuring out those RGB values is kind of annoying. You gotta do a little bit of Googling. So let's talk about a cooler way you can do that. So head over to your XE assets and come down here and hit this plus button. And if you take a look at this list, you wanna actually find uh, the color set, which was uh, right up here actually. And go ahead and give this a name. So I'm gonna call this uh, my color. And we're gonna try to spell color correctly. And let's open up the attributes inspector and what you can actually do in here. Let's see if I can find it. We want to change this to sRGB and we should be able to select our color. Let's see where I can select it. So let's click on this and we get our color selection palette here. Let's go ahead and uh, change this so we get some cool looking colors. So it looks like we've got this color, kind of a different color. Let's, uh, let's use this color. So we've definitely got a color in here and we've named it my color. So let's see if I remember how to do this correctly. Let's go back to our content view. And uh, instead of white up here, we wanna use that custom color we created, but we don't wanna have to bother uh, remembering what the RGB values are. So what you can do in here is pass in the string name of the color that you went ahead and created. So, Hopefully, if we did that correctly, we've got my color in there and then color pink. Let's go back to our assets. Let's double check that that looks correct. All right, let's see, sRGB, any appearance, dark appearance we don't care about for now. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, do these ones as well, just in case, I'm not sure which one it's rendering in the preview. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make these all 
a nice bright yellow. And we're gonna jump back in here and let's go ahead and hit that resume button to get our preview to update. Hopefully it updates. We should see, ah, there we are. So it's definitely yellow and it blends in with our sun, which uh, if we get rid of the rendering, which is original, it should show up I believe as black, might be white. We shall see, let's hit resume again. Sometimes you have to always hit resume in the previews, which kind of makes it questionable how useful they are, but there you have it. We've got our sun showing up. We've got our background gradient looking really nice, look really sharp. We wrapped it all in a Z stack so we can put content on top of it. And now you figured out how you can create colors in here without having to go to uh, Google and typing in the hex code and getting the RGB and all that stuff. Uh, and what's cool about this is you can actually uh, specify a different color value for dark mode versus light mode. Uh, for a P3 color space, if you're familiar with that, as well in light and dark. So there you have it, bit of a shorter video, all about gradients. They look beautiful in your apps. Obviously, the top apps nowadays use gradients in some way, shape, or form. Definitely consider them when you're building your own stuff. And uh, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button as per usual for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out with the videos quite a bit, keeps the channel going and growing. Comment down below with any questions, video suggestions, and feedback. And most importantly, hit subscribe to stay tuned and join the community. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.